All right, today uh, we're going to be starting chapter three and we're going to be learning about the functional units of the nerve system. So first I'm going to lead off with a great little video. What do we know about the inner workings of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do, from designing skyscrapers, to composing symphonies, is not the product of simple cellular interactions. And yet it might be. Because everything that humans do, or think, or feel, is a result of these basic units of brain structure, the neurons. The human brain contains more than 100 billion neurons. Just like a single ant could never build an anthill, a single neuron can't think or feel or remember. A neuron's power is a result of its connections to other neurons. Each neuron is connected to as many as a thousand of its neighbors. These trillions of connections provide the playing field upon which the complex activity of the brain takes place. Each neuron can turn its neighbors on or off depending on the signal it sends. And the resulting stable patterns of neuron firing represents memories and images and thoughts. We don't yet understand the relationship between neural activity and mental experience. We don't know what the precise pattern of memory or an image or a thought looks like. We don't yet know how to read the cerebral code of the neurons, but progress is being made. We can now watch exactly how various stimuli and memories cause the firing of hundreds of neurons. Perhaps these techniques will allow us to work our way up from the activity of a few neurons to see the structure that emerges from the whole. All right, so I really like that video because it gives a nice overarching framework for why you should care about neuronal activity. The pattern of neural firing, um, any particular pattern is what represents your thoughts, is going to influence your behaviors, and what we're going to be learning about a lot in this course is how, how neurons fire, how they communicate with each other, what are the things that impact that communication. So, this is a neuron, okay, and uh, here's the cell body, you can see a larger picture of it here, and here is where um, the two neurons um, would actually connect. This would be the um, dendritic spines of current neuron, and here's sort of the end foot of another neuron. So it looks like they're touching, but they're not. And here is an actual real neuron that looks like this. So what I really like is this shows the complexity of what a neuron could look like, okay? The cell body, all of these things that protrude off, these are dendrites, okay? And these tiny little things here are these sort of dendritic spines. Each of these tiny dendritic spines is where the neuron has an increased potential to connect with other neurons, okay? Then um, this right here is the axon, okay? And there's different types of endings that you can, the axon can have. So this shows a couple of them. Uh, but at the end of the axon, it's going to have some of branches here, and it's going to meet up with one or typically more other neurons, basically at their sort of dendritic spines. And so just thus the chain between neurons will continue. So this top here, I'm highlighting this is the dendrit, sort of all of the dendritic tree is what this was generally referred to. Um, this here is the cell body. And then this here is, you know, the, uh, is the axon. So, and neurons most generally have this, sort of the dendritic tree is distinct from sort of the axon branches. So here's all the various parts, the dendrites, the cell body. This includes the axon hillock, which we'll be learning about more, which is right here. Okay, the axon hillock is basically that link between the cell body and the axon. And you have the axon, and the axons have axon collaterals, branches, uh, telodendria, the terminal button, which is basically where it ends, and where the um, terminal button and sort of dendritic spine meet up is the synapse. And we'll be talking a lot more about the synapse. This is basically sort of the uh, communication 
pathway, shall we say. So information comes in at the dendrite, so it comes in up here, it travels down, the dendritic spine to the tree, it travels down to the cell body, okay? Then um, if you get enough information at the axon hillock, it triggers a uh, action potential that travels down the axon and ends at the terminal button, at which point it's going to send out neurotransmitters to communicate with the next um, neuron at the synapse. There are three types of neurons. We have a sensory neurons that collect information from a source. Okay, this can be muscle, skin. You have interneurons. These associate sensory and motor activity in the central nervous system. So here's an example of different types of uh, interneurons. So you have these uh, stellate cells in the thalamus, and the thalamus is a major integrated pathway. So this just shows all of the massive types of connections that these neurons have. Then you have this pyramidal cell in the cortex, and um, this shows some of the layers. Okay, so this would be the axon, would be white matter, and all of these dendrites in the cell bodies would be gray matter. Okay, and here um, you can really see aspects of the tree, tree metaphor here in this progenky cell in the cerebellum, and this is all dendrites. And then here's the axon body, and there's the, there's the axon. So these are all the connectivity that would be required for complex movement. And then you also have motor neurons, okay? These send signals from the brain and the spinal cord to the muscles. So motor neurons tend to be large. They pass information from the brain and the spinal cord to the body's muscles. So the axons tend to be particularly long and uh, this is, you know, the severing of these um, motor neurons can result, uh, this is what, is what occurs, excuse me, when you have spinal cord injury and can result in sort of loss of movement. So these are the, the very large neurons that you think of that basically go from your brain all the way, you know, um, down your spinal cord and they will comprise a huge portion of your central nervous system. So neurons they have a certain way that they communicate. And you're going to be learning about this in this course. Um, there are only two types of neuron, two types of messages that neurons send each other, okay? A neuron on its own is actually pretty stupid. So neurons can only function in groups. Uh, and they can send two types of messages. They can send an excitation message or an inhibition message. So each neuron re receives thousands of excitatory and inhibitory signals excuse me, every second. So an excitatory message is just like it sounds. It's going to be a message that's going to cause, that's going to say like, okay, this excitatory message, I want the neuron to fire. It's going to promote the neuron, like passing on its information to the next neuron, okay? Um, an inhibitory signal is going to do the opposite. It's going to decrease the likelihood of the neuron firing. It's going to basically say, you know what, this message stops here, okay? So you have excitation, you have inhibition, and they are constantly competing with each other. If you have more excitation, then the neuron fires. If you have more inhibition, then the neuron does not fire. This excitation inhibition is summed, okay? If the excitatory input exceeds the inhibitory, um, then it will fire, um, or it will not if the other relationship, if the opposite relationship is true. 